So what are the prerequisites of this course? Well, there is no assumption that you have any knowledge about databases. The whole point of this course is to get you started from ground zero and then get you up to speed in order to get to do some basic tasks like how to store some data, how to query the data and so on and so forth. So sit back and relax. This is just, if you're just getting started, this is the course for you. So what to expect from this course? Well, we will not be covering any uh, advanced concepts in this course. Right? We, will, we will just look at some basic stuff like uh, what is data? How do we store data? How do we join tables? You know, just so that maybe you're, you're looking for, um, you know, um, an interview where, where they ask some basic SQL skills and you just want to get started with or get some knowledge about, you know, how to go about with this SQL thing and how to go about with this database things and so on and so forth. And at the end of this course, you will be comfortable uh, writing some basic queries, writing uh, some aggregations and so on and so forth, which will just cover some basics and not some advanced stuff. So that'll be the overall takeaway from this course. So let's get started. So let's look at the very basic definition of a database. When I pull up Wikipedia, it says that a database is an organized collection of data, right? So data is around us, right? We, we are submerged in data. Anywhere you see, you look like, you look at a airline booking or you look like, um, you know, you look at a, um, maybe amazon.com, you have a lot of products listed and so on and so forth. So all this is just data around us. So. It says that a database is an organized collection of data. Now, this is really very tricky because when you say an organized collection, how do you really put this data and in what format? And if you look at the second sentence, it says that it is a collection of tables, queries, reports, views, and other objects. And we will go through this in more details, right, in, in, in the further slides. But basically, you can represent data, you can put it into tables, and you can write some queries against these tables in order to retrieve the data that you have just stored. Proceeding, the data is typically organized to model aspects of reality in a way that supports processes requiring information such as modeling the availability of rooms in a hotel in a way that supports finding a hotel with vacancies. Now, let's not get too much into this, but the bottom line is that when you store data, you should have some use to retrieve it, right? I mean, you are storing data so that you can query the data and get some information out of it. Now, the way that you store the data is extremely critical because you don't want to store the data in, in a format that you can't really write an easy query, right? The bottom line is you should be able to retrieve the data. And there are various models to store this data and we won't be going too much in depth. We'll take a very simple concept, let's get started, and then we will slowly start adding more and more information to it. So we, even before we take a deep dive, let's, let's look at some basic airline booking data. So when you go to a website, and book for any flight ticket, you enter in certain information. You enter your first name, last name, age, and stuff, right? And basically it stores an itinerary ID or a booking ID or whatever you call it. Now, where does this store, store it, right? So the company will have a database which will take in all this information and store it in the database. Now, when we talked about retrieval, accessing, and stuff, where does this come into play? Imagine one fine day you call up customer service and say that, oh, I have a problem with my airline booking. Can you help me out with this? So the customer service agent, first of all, asks you for, oh, can you give me a booking ID? And immediately he pulls up your records. Now what he's doing is that he's typing in the booking ID into an application which talks to the database and just pulls up your record which matches the booking ID equal to whatever you gave him. So this is typically how a querying works. So there are syntax, specialized syntax for it, which will help you talk to a database in order to just get the information that you need. And we will be precisely looking at 
all these different commonly used query and their syntax. Now, when we talk about databases, there are various companies who provide their flavors of databases. You will hear terms like Oracle, SQL Server, and so on and so forth. Now, this course is basically not meant to concentrate more on who is the vendor and stuff. We'll just take, you know, maybe SQL Server, run some basic queries against it. Now, the, the same syntax, most of the time, 99% of the syntax generally applies to all the all the commonly available vendors, right? We, in any case, we aren't going to go too much in advance. So at least the basic querying that you would need would be really covered here, which will help you quickly get started and you can really adapt to whatever vendor um, you know, you're looking forward to work with. All right, let's take one more example, right? You are joining as maybe an analyst and your boss comes to you and asks, okay, pull the total gross booking amount for 2015. Right now, the way let's assume the weight is stored in the database is something like this. So you have a booking number, you have a gross amount, and you have the date of booking. So basically, what he is asking you to do is actually give you a total amount, total gross bookings for 2015. So there are two parts to it. You need data only for 2015, and you need the amounts to be added up. Meaning, you need something like this, right? So this is where your query comes into play. Your query will be designed in such a way which says that out of this database, just give me entries for 2015 and whatever is written, just add it up and give the answer to me, right? So this is one, one of the areas where um, effective querying will help you. Now, before we go into too much of, you know, tables, queries and stuff like that, Let's take a step back. Let's see what can we store in a database, right? Database is nothing but a container which will store all your data. And you can arrange those data in tables, views, and stuff like that. And we'll go into it um, in detail. First is text, right? You saw in our um, previous slide that you stored your first name, last name, etc. So basically, you can store text. You can store numbers. We, we saw the booking amounts, gross amounts, right? So you can actually store numbers, decimals, and stuff like that. Images, of course, there are various ways to store this in binary format and so on and so forth. There are various querying techniques in order to retrieve the information that you need. Now, again, this is just three examples I have given you, and there are tons of other stuff you can store in a database. You can store XML and stuff like that. And there are various syntax specially designed to retrieve that kind of information. Let's just keep it simple for this course. Okay, how do we store this data? First of all, we need to understand what the data needs to be stored. Right? We need to do a deep analysis of what that data is. Right? Is it something that you're going to be querying? Is it something that you just need to be archived? Is it just something like an ebook, right, where you need to store? Right? So that basically comes up it takes us to a very different world of structured data, unstructured data, and so on and so forth. In this course, we will be just talking about structured data. Structured means nothing but the data that fits into tables. Okay, so accordingly, once we realize what our data is, then we accordingly design some tables because after all, we need some way to query it, right? So we need to have a perfectly designed table so that it's really easy for you to query it. And believe me, this is a very simple task. And then we issue some queries to it in order to retrieve our data. And that's it. So basically, it's a three-step process. Create a database, put some tables in it, store some data in it, and query it. Again, I have really simplified this. There are lots of inbuilt stuff, lots of stuff that you need to do or you can do. And again, those are some things that, that we will not be covering in this course but at least the basic things would definitely be covered in this. All right, so let's put it all together. So let's take the example of an airline database. You create an airline database, then you create tables according to your data. So let's assume you have, you need a table to storing, say reservation related data, right? You create a table with reservation details. Next, you create a detail or detail table for passengers. So say you showed their first name, last name, things like that. Next, say flight information. You have your 
takeoff time, your flight numbers, and some other data, right? Now, a person, if he wants some data, he would actually query these tables and get the data, right? He can directly query the reservation table or the passenger table or a combination of both reservation and passenger to see which passengers reserved you know which flights things like that right and that's where the concept of joins and stuff will come into play again it's super simple concepts we'll take it step by step